What if I asked you, who is the greatest UFC champion of all time? Let me guess, you're going to say Anderson Silva, the middleweight champion who harnessed the Matrix and clowned his opponents as if they didn't even belong in the cage with him. 10 title defenses after all, that sort of record speaks for itself. That, that's my argument for Anderson being the GOAT. It's, there's moments that he, he had. Or maybe you would tell me John Jones, the grim reaper who haunted 205 for more than a decade straight, even when he was not fighting. He didn't only beat his challengers, he made examples out of each one. But I just, I just feel it in my whole being that I'm the best fighter on the planet. GSP maybe? He did clear out three different generations of the best welterweights on the planet and retired on top. Uh, I put him as the GOAT and I, I say he's the GOAT. The GOAT is a fighter but also as a person. Wait a second, we're forgetting someone. God damn it, it keeps happening. This guy, on paper and empirically, is more accomplished and skilled than all those mentioned above. When he was on top, very few fans tuned into his fights, and the company he worked for shunned him, but he kept winning and winning, and left us and the company no choice. Why do we keep forgetting? You look like Demetrius Johnson is probably right now the best ever. The best ever, yeah, I agree. Like Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson is one of the all-time greats, and it is time we stamp his greatness into the collective unconscious, so we may never forget. My buddy Ryan was asking me about Demetrius earlier, and he said Demetrius is very clearly the number one pound for pound fighter ever. He's clearly the GOAT, but I hear him left out of a lot of GOAT conversations. Welcome to the fighting business. There hasn't been a lot of greats to come out of the flyweight division since its inception. But Demetrius Johnson didn't just make it out as the best flyweight to ever do it, but as an all time great of our sport. The fantasies of a six foot three DJ versus John Jones will forever live rent free in my head. And in today's video, I'll make those fantasies even realer. Let's go through the career of Demetrius Johnson, the man who made his talking in the octagon, but I might as well let his opponents tell the story for us. Joseph Benavides II. At UFC 152, the tournament to crown the first flyweight champion came to a close and Demetrius Johnson was the victor. In the finals, he faced Joseph Benavides, and it was a closely contested fight with alpha male student fighting success and winning a few rounds. The judges awarded DJ the fight and rightfully so, but business was not completely settled between the two finalists. Like I said, you know, if I become a champion, same thing's gonna happen. I'm gonna go home, rest, and get back in the gym, get ready for the next battle. The new champion notched a few title defenses, and Benavides won a couple as well, enough to get another shot at the flyweight title. At that time, Joseph Benavides was one of the best fighters in the company, and he had only lost to DJ and Dominic Cruz. With how the first fight went, many expected these two to be at it forever. This is one of those deals where it can define your career, or it could make it so that, uh, uh, your, your career's legacy could be tarnished a little bit. Benavidez fought a close battle in their first fight a year ago in September with Mighty Mouse getting the split decision victory. Who do you feel has the mental edge heading into the rematch? You know, mental edge, I would have to say Demetrius Johnson has a slight mental edge over Joseph Benavidez. In his third title defense, DJ silenced Joseph Benavidez for good when he knocked him out in the first round, out cold. Knockouts don't happen at flyweight, they said. But as Demetrius celebrated his KO victory, a few people did spare a glance. Undeniably talented, but nah, he was just too small. Not worth watching. Kyoji Horiguchi. Horiguchi. For his next title defense, DJ was granted his first pay-per-view main event. UFC 186 was the event, but with Michael Bisbing on the card and the return of Rampage Jackson, the flyweight champion was once again an afterthought. DJ showed up to the press conference as he was supposed to, but he was rarely asked a question. This was the sixth title defense, but hardly anyone paid attention. It was the Rampage Jackson show from start to finish. <laughs> Demetrius Johnson changed the narrative at the very last second of the fight, pretty much literally. With a second left in the fifth round, the champion locked in an armbar submission, and Horiguchi tapped out, marking the latest finish in UFC history. They looked at him again, and for a second, they did appreciate the record. I don't know if you noticed or not, but after the fourth round, people were walking out. I didn't I notice. 
I don't give a he, shit what people are doing. So, I'm watching the fight. He's just one of these guys who's just got to put his head down, keep doing his thing, and, and you have to respect him. This little guy had some skills. A rematch or something was next. John Dotson 2. John, the magician, Upon defending his flyweight title six times, the rematch tour began, and John Dotson was the first in line. Two years ago, Dotson was the first challenger for Demetrius' newly won flyweight championship, and while DJ was the clear winner, Dotson did have his moments. A knockdown in the second round had the champion rattled, and out of all flyweights, Dotson was the only guy who was able to match Mighty Mouse in speed. Maybe he was even a bit faster. To settle the lingering doubts, the rematch was booked for UFC 191. Any man that's, that's been dropped before, they're gonna be scared to get hit again. And Demetri Johnson's definitely been that man who's been hit by me one too many times, and he's gonna be also scared. He'll be more afraid to be hit by me than anything else. With Anthony Johnson, Frank Mir, and Paige Van Zent on the card, Demetrius once again received little attention. But during the main event of the evening, there was a noticeable shift. Two years ago, the two were almost evenly matched, but this time around, Demetrius Johnson controlled the entirety of the fights and looked to be the faster athlete out of the two. The win was decisive. The performance was impressive. The improvement was substantial. Demetrius Johnson had finally arrived, and with the seventh title defense in the books, people finally started paying attention. Seventh title defense by Mighty Mouse. He absolutely dominated that entire fight. I, I know he wanted to finish really bad and didn't get it, but he looked awesome tonight. That's why everybody keeps on talking about this glass roof, this glass ceiling. I'm gonna break through it. I'm gonna make sure that I can come back and like, come back stronger. If Dana gives me the opportunity to go ahead and beat up, uh, beat up a bunch of people that are, seem worthy to fight Demetrius, I will do it and I'll make sure I can make another title run at this again. Seven title defenses managed in relative obscurity, but the MMA world was beginning to wake up. Maybe he was one of the all-time greatest. Henry Cejudo won. The next challenger for Mighty Mouse was Henry Cejudo, an undefeated fighter and undeniably talented. But most important of all, this guy won a gold medal at the Olympics. You don't often see athletes of that caliber inside the octagon, but out of all the divisions, Flyweight was graced by the presence of combat royalty, and Cejudo, ever confident, declared himself as the mouse trap. Well, like I said, his time is coming and I'm the big chief. I'm the mouse trap. Henry Cejudo was rather inexperienced in MMA, especially compared to the champion, but the Olympic athlete was certain of his victory. And throughout fight week, he spoke with all the confidence in the world. It's, been, it's, it's part of my journey. It's been part of my, this, this is my destiny. My destiny, like number, my number one goal. DJ had defended his title a total of seven times and the pressure was on him to break into that illustrious category of all-time greats such as GSP and Anderson Silva, but he had an Olympic gold medalist to get through. And according to some, Cejudo, new to MMA and all, was the future of the division. I knew that one day that when they get together, we're gonna fight. And uh, I'm able to study my opponent, which makes it easier for me. And that's it, when it comes, when, when the bell rings, it's enough talking, enough, uh, enough, enough mouse traps. It's, it's, it's time to get ready for business. In the co-main event, Demetrius took Cejudo to MMA school, and the previously undefeated flyweight was dealt a brutal lesson. Wrestling didn't matter one bit as the champion crushed the face and body of combat royalty with knees and elbows in the clinch. The very first knee that landed rattled the messenger, and that was the beginning of the end. Eight title defenses in the books, and it took him a few minutes of work. Goat shit right there. Henry took his first MMA loss with class and admitted that he was humbled by DJ, but beaten him at his own game. I really did believe I was going to dominate the clinch. Uh, coming from a wrestling background, I felt really strong. So, uh, he dominated in that certain area. I felt good, like my recovery, I've never felt this good. It's just that it, it takes, if you guys have ever fought, you guys get hit. And uh, man, it, it's a humbling experience for me. Like, I, 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 I was humbled tonight. This loss was a turning point for Cejudo. And he would go on to become one of the greats of this generation. DJ and Cejudo even became buddies and training partners, but I'm sure UFC 197 haunts Cejudo to this day. Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott! After the Henry Cejudo destruction at UFC 197, there was really no one left. 
the top contenders were wasted, some of them defeated twice, and so to solve the contender problem, Dana White started season 24 of The Ultimate Fighter, with all cast members being champions from other organizations. Joseph Benavidez and Henry Cejudo, two prior victims of DJ, were the coaches, and the winner would be the next challenger for the flyweight champion. After a long season, a winner emerged, and it was Tim Elliott, a former UFC fighter who found his way back in, and now, he was set to face the first and only flyweight champion. Unsurprisingly, Demetrius opened up as a massive favorite to win, and the tough winner embraced the role. I was the same way in wrestling. I'm never a very good wrestler, um, but I won a college national title against a guy who was a three-time national champion. I really thought I was going to beat him. But uh, it's, like you said, he's just a person, and uh, this is not a sport where you stay undefeated in. You know? Mighty Mouse was the single most skilled fighter on the roster almost peerless in terms of technique and skill, and Elliot basically admitted it. You can't beat him in mixed martial arts, so might as well turn this into a dogfight and try your luck in that department. Too many guys, uh, they try to fight DJ technique for technique, and uh, you're not going to beat him that way. He's too good, he's too fast, he's too strong, so I'm going to try to take all those aspects out of the fight. As one of the biggest underdogs in recent memory, Elliot knew what he was in for, and contrary to what most expected, he defied expectations, but just not enough. In the first round, Elliott secured top position and fans in attendance braced themselves for an upset, but the champion survived the submission attempts and as the fight went on, Demetrius took over, eventually winning a clear-cut decision. Despite the loss, Elliott was appreciated for his effort and he gave the champion respect, calling him what he deserved. He's, he's the best in the world and I'm just happy to share the octagon with him. Uh, he was able to sur uh, survive because he's a true vet, you know, he's the best in the world. A small scare. But DJ got through, and nothing had changed. The flyweight championship was still around his waist, and with the ninth title defense accomplished, Mighty Mouse was one step closer to challenging a long-standing record. Wilson Race. The challenger, Wilson Hayes. Over the past few years, Demetrius had gone through the best of the best at flyweight, but this one right here was the ticket to immortality. The 10th title defense was coming up, and fans were finally starting to realize just how special DJ was. After all, the only other guy who got to this point was Anderson Silva, and with one more defense, Mighty Mouse was going to tie his record. A record many considered would not be touched for a long, long time. Oh, and his opponent was Wilson Race. I don't know Wilson Hayes. Uh, you know. I like DJ, DJ's my friend, so I'm just gonna go DJ because I don't know anything about race. Between the talk of tying Anderson Silva's record and all the epicness, DJ's 10th challenger was forgotten. Wilson Race was his opponent, and in addition to being a massive fighter at 125, he was an accomplished grappler. If Elliott was able to lock in a few submissions, surely a bigger fighter with better jujitsu would trouble him even worse. Same, same thing, same strategy, everything that I thought, before the Elliott fight, you know, it was the same exact thing I thought, you know, uh, after the Elliott fight, you know, so. He likes to be able to, to be the one that's like imposing the ground, I want to say, or like imposing his will on the ground. And I don't know if he'll be able to do that against Wilson Hayes. This is where most would stumble and the unlikely underdog comes out on top. For most, even the best, this level of greatness is just too much and the customary title defense becomes their worst nightmare. But DJ made Wilson race look just like that a customary title defense. While most wilt under the pressure, DJ looked like he had ascended yet another level, and he dominated the fight from start to finish. Race was outmatched on the feet, busted up, and the champion nearly finished him in the second round. And in the third, Demetrius submitted the accomplished BJJ artist with an arm bar, and just like that, with relative ease, he had tied Anderson Silva. He did everything that he did, but then I just couldn't, I know, overcome that, you know, like, but it wasn't because I was frustrated, it was just because I just, you know, like, he did a good job of winning, you know. Did you expect, if if you were not going to be able to win this fight, that that was how he would be able to to get you? Uh, not really, man, you know, you know that's why I come from, I come from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, and uh, that hurts more than a knockout for me, you know, but, uh, you know, it just, it just props to him, you know, like, at the end, at the end of the day. Ten title defenses. Mighty Mouse had won the game right there and then. But the flyweight champion didn't think too much about this massive accomplishment. It was the one after this. No, I'm going past. My goal is to go past ten. Contentious uh, stepping stone. It's it's the ultimate goal is eleven. I mean, right. There's I mean, it's like Floyd Mayweather when he got 49 and 0. It's like why would you stop there? Like Ray Borg. Ray, the Trans Mexican Devil. Borg. Somewhere along the way. 
professional relationship between Demetrius Johnson and the UFC grew tense, and predictably the slander began. The company had a crossweight super fight between TJ Dillashaw and Demetrius planned, but Mighty Mouse had the gall to negotiate and asked for a bump in pay. I, I think that a fight between him and TJ Dillashaw would be something that people would actually be interested in and could sell pay-per-views and could make money, but he absolutely refuses to fight the guy. Dana White was not happy about it. First of all, when he did his deal, he didn't want pay-per-view. Right. He didn't want pay-per-view, he wanted upfront money, no pay-per-view. Um, you know, he, he wasn't very confident in his abilities to sell pay-per-views. He has the lowest selling pay-per-view in the history of the UFC. I, I'm, I'm bullying you? How do you bully the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world? Fortunately, with DJ being the champion, one of the most successful in UFC history at that, there was not much Dana White could do. And after a few months, the big one was announced for UFC 216. He had tied Anderson Silva's record, but if he could win this one, Demetrius would be in a class of his own, untouchable, for a long, long time. Ray Borg was out to ruin all of that. This fight was scheduled before and fell through, but it was finally here. Borg was the only surviving contender and the last obstacle for Mighty Mouse. I will guarantee everyone that I will make it to the fight and win the fight. Oh, and win the fight. We're getting that. Yeah. You are guaranteeing it. I'm are guaranteeing you winning? It. Um, I say third round submission. I really feel like I, I, I bring in this uh, resilience and uh, this will to win that no one else has brought in. Given the animosity between the champion and Dana White, the company was almost nonchalant about the humongous occasion. And for the most part, it was just another pay-per-view event. One or two promo packages was all the company could afford. But now, the MMA world was watching, finally paying attention. I think DJ, man, you can't go against that guy. He does it all, he mixes it up so well. Um, he's gonna break that record. Uh, I, don't, I mean, I really like Demetrius Johnson. I think he's gonna keep dominating that weight class. I know Ray Borg, you know, he's a scrappy guy. He's, he's got a title fight now, but <sighs> Mighty Mouse is the GOAT, man. In the co main event, DJ walked out to the octagon as he always did, not a bit bothered by what was going on. He had been absolutely flawless in his last few performances, and in the most crucial title defense of his career, he outdid himself. As I present a skill set that no other fighter has before him. You know, he really, you know, you guys have barely even seen what I can do. So not even DJ really truly knows what to prepare for. He hasn't seen the kind of fighter I am yet. And not only that, I'm young, hungry, not a damn thing to lose. Ray Borg didn't stand a chance, and the flyweight champion demonstrated just how far ahead he was. In the final round, Demetrius pulled off the most impressive submission in UFC history when he launched a challenger for a suplex and then transitioned it into an armbar mid-air. You can debate all day about the most vicious knockout in UFC history, but that right there is the greatest submission win ever. And the fact that DJ broke the all-time record with a move like that makes it even more special. But then again, this was what we had come to expect from the best mixed martial artist on the planet. I was on the ground before. I thought he was just going to throw me. I was going to get ready to move and scramble. Um, I thought I was on the ground before he before he hit that arm bar. He hit the arm bar, I guess, mid-air. You know, unfortunately, age, age was not on my side tonight, and I just need to learn more. History was written that night. It didn't matter if it was the Coleman event. It didn't matter if the pay-per-view sold only 200,000 pay-per-view buys. DJ had surpassed the likes of Anderson Silva and GSP, and on that night, he left no doubt. He was the best fighter in the world, and nobody was going to come close for a very long time. He had arrived at something truly superb. What could possibly be next? Ra Tang. After securing the record, DJ faced a much improved Henry Cejudo at UFC 227, and finally, he lost the championship via split decision. It was a controversial decision, and many felt that Demetrius had done enough to win against Cejudo, but the belt was off of him, and Dana White was quick to act. Months after his loss, it was announced that DJ, the greatest champion in UFC history, was traded to 1FC for Ben Askren. Fighter trade, the UFC will release Demetrius Johnson, allowing him to sign with one. Really is, this is the first time something like this has happened in the history of mixed martial arts, I believe. Considering what he had accomplished, this was a disrespectful gesture on the part of the company, but Demetrius Johnson was happy to be out of there. And now, he had a new organization to conquer. So you can argue, he kind of beat everyone already. Maybe it was time for him to leave. We all expected the former UFC champion to shred through 1FC, and initially he did. But on April 7th, 2021, 
Demetrius didn't just suffer a loss. He was knocked unconscious by Adriano Morais with a brutal knee to the face. He had been rocked and dropped a few times, but knocked unconscious, maybe he was slowing down. All of them do around that age, right? DJ had absolutely nothing left to prove, but the guy was not going to retire on that note. First order of business was to remind them, and the target was Ra Tang, one of the best Muay Thai fighters on the planet. One of the, I think he's going to be, and he already is. I mean, if you look at his fan base, I think he has two and a half million followers, half of them are from America. He doesn't even speak the language, and it's because he has a charisma. Obviously, he's pound for pound, one of the greatest strikers on the planet, if not the greatest striker on the planet. This fight was contested under special rules. Round one and three under Muay Thai, while two and four would be traditional MMA. Really, who does this? But DJ was ready to throw hands with one of the most dangerous strikers in the world. And at 1x, DJ stood right in front of the Iron Man and was brave enough to test himself. Rotang had a few minutes on the clock to finish the former UFC champion, but Demetrius made it to the second round. And with one takedown, Mighty Mouse took the back of the Muay Thai striker and put him to sleep with a rear naked choke. DJ held his own in Muay Thai, but Rotang just could not survive in his world. Now that he was back on the win column against a worthy opponent, Demetrius Johnson began the final trek of his illustrious career. Adriano Morais. At 36 years of age and a long career behind him, Demetrius Johnson had pretty much done it all. Standing and trading with one of the pound for pound best strikers in the world and then choking him unconscious would have been the perfect end to such a legendary career. But that one blemish just had to be rectified. On April 7th of 2021, Demetrius faced the defending champion Adriano Morais, and while most expected the flyweight go to outclass him, it was a competitive fight. But in the second round, Morais knocked the former UFC champion to the ground, and as allowed by the rules of 1FC, he landed a knee to the head of a grounded DJ, and that was the end of the fight. That had to be corrected. After the victor over Raw Tang, Demetrius was granted a rematch, and this mega fight was set for 1FC's debut on Amazon Prime. And this time around, Morais predicted a different finish. You said you'd be looking for a submission this time. Is that still the plan? Yes, of course. I mean, I'm always looking to, to, to finish. Uh, and for me, it would be awesome to have a submission this time. Thankfully, the folks over at 1FC regarded Demetrius as one of the greats and treated him like a champion better than the UFC ever did. Adriano flat out admitted that Demetrius was the MMA GOAT and another victory over him would immortalize his own career. I'm still working hard because I know right now he's gonna come hungry to revenge, you know, and uh, some guys with like this kind of feeling that the revenge is they are tough as fuck. Well. Yes, this guy is, this guy is tough, you know, like this guy have everything uh, in MMA, he's good like stand up, he's good on the ground, you know, he's a complete athlete. That is what I want to show for everybody. The talking point was a different rule set. Maybe Demetrius was caught off guard, and that was a one-time stumble. But Morais was a different kind of beast. Bigger, taller, and definitely stronger. The 1FC champion literally dwarfed the former UFC fighter. And you just had to wonder, could the great DJ overcome a monster such as this? On August 27, 2022, Mighty Mouse had the opportunity to set it right. And it was another chaotic masterclass between two of the best flyweights on planet Earth. After four rounds, it was Demetrius who landed the kill shot. A right hand dropped the champion. And after stalking a daze in the rice for a moment, Mighty Mouse landed a flying knee to the head, repaying the favor from before, and simply walked off knowing that the fight was over. Done and dusted. And now, he was the 1FC flyweight champion. Definitely past his physical prime, and yet, he had conquered another promotion. What could they even say now? He's too small. He's beating up bantamweight rejects. He just isn't entertaining enough. Dana White was right about him. Demetrius Johnson heard it all during his UFC career, time and time again. And time and time again, he went out there and turned the same critics into believers, one performance at a time. When he captured the flyweight title, very few people cared, and the company itself didn't find the need to market him. But with every title defense, DJ kept getting closer and closer to the mountaintop, and when he walked out to the octagon at UFC 216, you just could not deny him anymore. When he approached the end of his career, we expected something special. And aside from that one knockout loss, Mighty Mouse was damn near flawless as usual, all the way until the end. 1FC Fight Night 10 was likely the last we saw of him. 
he concluded his business with Morais and defeated him in the trilogy belt. And if this is the end, good game, Demetrius Johnson. Noobs will discredit you. They just don't know any better. But the real ones know. You're one of the greatest of all time. Hope you enjoyed. But I gotta bounce. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.